Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. And uh, today we are going to go through a number of different stocks. There's a lot of movement out there, uh, a lot of cross currents, and uh, definitely worth uh, focusing in on uh, some of the requests that came through. And uh, what I wanted to do to start is uh, the lesson is going to be on RSI. I have uh, used RSI over the years. Now, it's not on my primary screen. As you know, you see my four charts up and I don't have RSI on there. However, I use multiple screens, multiple monitors, and on another monitor, I do have RSI. So I did want to show you what I'm doing because I get a huge amount of questions about it. And... Um, I know it's something that can be added into what you're doing, and I think it can fine tune a few things. I wouldn't have it override anything necessarily, but I want to show you the real strengths of it in the way that I see it anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the agenda. So I'm going to talk about how I would incorporate RSI, uh, not necessarily as a standalone system, or you could do it that way, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I use two different RSIs, a 20 RSI and a 5. One is for like the trend, the 20 is for the trend, and a 5 is for the overbought, oversold, and I'll show you how I use them together. And then we're going to go through the uh, stock requests that came through. So let's go ahead and get into this lesson now on RSI. Okay, so I've got four charts up, but what I've done is in the upper left, I've replaced my standard chart with the zigzag and the RS with a RSI chart. And uh, what I've done to create this, let me just zoom in on this. Um, I created a 20 RSI, and then I also created a 5 RSI, and it created two different scales. And then I just took the 5, the, I literally took this, grabbed it, and overlaid it onto the 20 so it happens on one scale. I like the look of this um, because I can see them both together. And what it gives me the three lines automatically. I want the 30 line and the 70 line for the overbought oversold. And I want this 50 line, which is incredibly important in relation to the 20. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is use the this red line, this 20 RSI to gauge the trend. And um, as long as it's staying above the 50 level, we're, we're in a pretty strong trend, okay? Now, what I do is if it hits the 70 mark, I start looking for signs of divergence after a pullback. So we're still in a good trend and we still get a pullback. We're, we're above the 50 level, so we know we're trending to the upside. And then we reach this, this 70 level. So on the next pullback, yeah, I want to look for a trading opportunity uh, off of that. I'll explain it a little bit more in detail in a second. Um, but then I'm looking for signs of divergence since I reached the 70 level. And if you notice, we made a new high here and higher high in price. And this actually didn't get to 70. So we have a little bit of divergence show up on the 20 RSI. You can also see it on the 5 RSI. But what I'm looking for between these two peaks here, this makes a um, pull back and goes to a new high. And this clearly makes a lower high in the red RSI, the 20 RSI. Now I know I'm sort of looking at the end or a little bit more of a deeper pullback. I think this can be pretty advantageous if you look at it this way. In a, tr in a stock that's been trending for a while, you're looking for a point where it finally reaches that 70 level. Um, MACD and ADX can give you divergent signals, but I actually think if I'm using, if I were just going to look for divergences, I would probably use RSI for that. I think it's probably the best tool for it. Um, but uh, what I would tell you is I actually, I don't use our, um, I don't look for divergences all that often. It's not really a trading play that I'm, I'm looking to aggressively incorporate, but it, it does help with my analysis. If I'm looking at a stock and it's hitting a new high like this and I see the RSI 20 not getting above 70 after it did already, then I know this is probably getting kind of late. Um, where I think it can be really uh, helpful, this tool, is uh, used in conjunction with the other time frames and the ADX and the MACD is let's zero in on this spot right here because we had a move to the downside and then we got a rally. And notice what happened. Look at this 50 line going across. Do you see how not only did the red line break below 50, which tells you the trend is kind of in jeopardy. And we're seeing that when we see, um, you know, the ADX, red ADX, um, red 
causing a ADX peak above 25 and when the MACD gets below the zero line. But we get another sort of definitive look when the red crosses down, the 20 RSI crosses down below 50, and then on a subsequent rally, it can't get back above the 50 level. So when I see that and then I get the overbought oversold oscillator, which is the five RSI above 50. So that is the tool right there is this fifth, this five RSI getting above 50 when the 20 RSI does not get above 50. So if you can incorporate that with a pinch play, you see the pinch play here, you see how red DI is on top. It gives you a timing tool here. And we can go back and look at the periods where we were on a bullish trend, but we hadn't gotten overbought. And look at these periods where we pulled back below the 50 level with the 5 RSI. And these are all pullback potential. Uh, they at least highlight to you where you should be looking at the ADX and MACD for, for our setups. And um, so that's how I would go about doing it. So what I would do is when this thing gets into oversold territory and then I go down to the daily chart, as long as everything looks good on the uh, weekly and the monthly based on the ADX and the MACD, then I go down to uh, the smaller time frame and look for signals. So that's how I would go about incorporating RSI into what I'm doing. But I think using this overlay where we got the five and the 20 together, one telling us how strong the trend is and the other telling us um, the overbought oversold condition and use this 50 level as that barometer for both. Um, now, the only other thing I'd say is, so you notice how right now this has reached the seven, this has reached the 30 level. So we can still short another rally here if we come up and let's say this red, uh, the five RSI gets back above 20 and the uh, 20 RSI does not, then we have another shorting opportunity near the 18 MA. But um, after that, we want to watch and see if the 20 confirms or not. I mean, if the 20 doesn't go below 70 and makes a higher bottom, then we know we're probably getting near the end of this decline. So that's how I would go about using it on both ends, on the upside, then to the downside, and use these trending opportunities during pullbacks. Use the 5 RSI pulling back as, a, as an opportunity to really isolate where to look at it. Um, hope this is helpful. Let's go ahead and get into the stocks now. Just quickly, my services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. The individual package has two to three reports each week and a special video just for that package. Uh, if you have an interest in trying the service for a few months, you can use a coupon code STOCKTALK and uh, get the first two months for $50. Let's go ahead and get into the stocks now. Okay, so uh, as we get going into the stocks, I'm going to start out for the index for this week. I'm going to do the uh, U.S. dollar uh, ETF, the UUP. Um, and what I wanted to do, I thought it was worthwhile to uh, maybe do a quick review on the different characteristics I'm looking for for each time frame. And th there's four things that I look at for each time frame uh, in terms of trying to determine certain things. And uh, so number one, I'm looking for the, the trend. What is the trend? Can I define the trend in that time frame? The second thing is the momentum characteristics. And uh, I'm typically going to use MACD and uh, ADX for that. Um, the third is overbought oversold. And I'm typically looking at that in relation to um, the 18 MA. How far away am I above or below? Uh, to determine whether I'm overbought or oversold. And then the longevity of the trend, which is essentially saying how long has this trend been in force since it kicked in. So for UUP on a weekly chart right here, it the 18 crossed above the 40, price basically held. And, and since the middle of last year, this weekly trend has been in force. Okay. If we go to the daily chart, we can see we triggered here back in February and um, had a little test and it turned back up and we got both moving averages rising. And that trend has been in force since basically since March. So um, if I'm looking at this, I, I see pretty good momentum characteristics on the monthly. Uh, I like the looks of the uh, 18 and the, um, I'm sorry, the, the MACD and the ADX uh, with a rising uh, ADX line. Um, I like the price action, but we actually haven't confirmed the uptrend because the 18 is still below the 40. So I'd probably call this neutral, you know, uh, upward bias, uh, but more neutral. And uh, this is clearly in an uptrend on the weekly chart, um, but 
One thing I'll say is that this is getting overbought. You see how this is stretched away from the 18 week? Uh, we've got really good momentum characteristics, so I would consider a pullback probably going to lead to another rally. But one thing you want to keep in mind is since this trend has been in place since back here, we already had a breakout and a pullback here, another pullback here. And after two of those, I'm typically looking for something a little bit more complex. I wouldn't look for a simple pullback this time. I think we get something a little bit more complex once it gets started. Um, if we look at the daily chart, again, momentum characteristics are decent, although we look like we're starting a contraction phase when I look at the DI lines. You see how green DI is making a lower high and uh, red DI is making a higher low and they're starting to come together. And that would lead me to believe that, yeah, we're going to break the 18 day and go through some type of a consolidation pattern where the 18 and the 40 uh, come together and maybe even see the MACD line come down closer to the zero line. So that'd be what I'd be on the lookout for. And then we can just see from this chart here uh, that we've made a pretty substantial move back up to the prior peak. Um, if you look at the the absolute the actual U.S. dollar index, it actually has broken out above this peak. Uh, this was a bit of a spike in the uh, ETF. Um, so this is actually pretty bullish action what's taking place. But uh, remember during the lesson what I talked about. So now we've reached an overbought condition on the RSI 20 without divergence. So I, what I'd expect to see is some kind of a pullback and then a retest, maybe a minor higher, um, higher high, and then look for signs of divergence there to tell you that this is starting to really going to kick in. Uh, back to the downside. So I put this on this chart for this week just so you have this as a reference as we're talking. Um, so I, I think when you want to look at it, you want to look at the trend in each time frame. You want to look at the momentum characteristics, which is pretty good overall, except for what we're seeing in the short term on the daily. Um, overbought, oversold. I mean, we're definitely overbought on the uh, weekly chart. And look at how stretched away we are on the monthly. You see how far we've gotten away from the 18 month? Um, and then the longevity is, is a factor here on both the weekly and the daily because they've been enforced for quite some time. So anyway, keep that in mind. Even write down a little uh, a cheat sheet on your desk. Have the one, two, three, four things you want to look at in each time frame. You start doing that in each time frame and you're going to have a really clear idea of what's taking place. Okay, let's go to Intuit. Um, so this is the first request that came in. So um, pretty rough here. I mean, this is pretty violent selling and the way that it's declining. And you notice how it's having a real hard time coming up for air. Um, every time it tries to get any kind of a rally going, it immediately ends up going to another new low. Um, you know, we can, uh, we can draw in a downtrend line here uh, clearly. And notice again, when you have a good trend line, it'll almost always look like the 18. You see how the 18 week is, is essentially the same as the trend line. That's when you know you have a really solid trend line in place. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, in fact, we can do the same thing on the daily chart, the shorter term trend, and it's pretty close. I didn't actually draw that perfect, but it, it's pretty close to the 18 on that time frame. So we know the 18s in each of these time frames are determining something pretty important, which is the trend here and the trend here, at least the trend lines. And so the first order of business would be getting through the daily trend line. If we can do that, then we have a potential chance to get back to this weekly trend line. Um, but based on the momentum conditions and the fact that MACD hit another new low um, in both of these time frames with price, I don't know that I would necessarily be looking for any kind of a big reversal yet. Even though we're getting down towards the 40-month uh, moving average, and uh, let's just see where this bigger support comes in, actually closer to 300. So um, let's just see how this can ha handle the 40 month moving average. But uh, I wouldn't be in any hurry based on the momentum conditions. NOW is, um, you know, is definitely rolled over. If we look at the weekly and I just take this zoom this out a little bit, we can draw our trend line in and see. Not only we, we did we break the trend line, but we rallied back to test. That was right about the midpoint of the decline, um, okay, right around the 600 level. And then we came down and took out this low. So we have, again, we have a trend line in place to the downside that's mirroring the 18-week. 
Uh, on this time, this time it's on the top side of it, but it's the same slope and very close to the same price. What I don't like is how ferocious the decline was here. Even though this is getting really oversold, it's telling me the power of the decline. And we're seeing that also on the ADX hitting a new high above this prior green peak based on the sellers. OK, so um, we got to be careful with stocks like this. This is uh, this is the type of thing that is probably not going to turn on a dime. Don't expect a V bottom. Look for some kind of a sideways pattern to develop um, as it finds support, as opposed to something that's just going to turn on a dime and take off like we've seen over the over the past you know five to ten years in a lot of these stocks. OK, so I'm going to talk about gold and silver and um one of the things that the reason why I wanted to look at the U.S. dollar is in the U.S. dollar is very strong, but overbought. Right. I mean, it's overbought on that weekly and it looks like it's going to consolidate some that should help gold and silver in here. And we have to see the quality of the rally off of support. If we don't get a good rally off of support, then we have to assume we're kind of caught in a trading range for now. And it shows up as a flat monthly moving average. You see how the 18 month is flat now. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean this rolls over and turns down because we do have decent momentum conditions in place. But what it tells me is that it's probably going to take a little bit of time. Even if we get a run up towards this resistance up here, 180 for the GLD, I, I just don't think it's ready to take off yet. So uh, the negative about this sell off that we've seen recently, that was probably caused in a lot of ways by the strength in the dollar. Um, means to me that we're going to have a hard time getting going on a new trend. So uh, just kind of be aware of that. I think I would look at this as a trade off support up to resistance if I were going to try and play it. Uh, don't play for trending moves. And one of the questions I had was what are the better ETFs? And I, I think the GLD, I mean, the, the uh, GDX, uh, GDXJ, they all basically look the same right now. Um, but there are times, and I would just tell you, look at GLD. If you're looking at gold, right, and you want to look at uh, owning gold futures, essentially, then own the GLD. If you'd rather own the individual stocks, uh, large cap, then own the GDX. And if you want to own the juniors, the small guys, that's a more aggressive way to play. Then you do the GD. Uh, X, J. So just kind of keep those things in mind, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I would say right now, I don't know that it matters much because all the charts look about the same. Uh, so silver, you know, one of the things that's bugged me a little bit about the gold move when it was getting going is that silver hadn't kicked in to any significant degree. You can see the 18 month was still flat to down when this was trying to get up through here. Uh, we don't have the same kind of momentum conditions in place. Uh, on the uh, SLV yet. We're going to probably need to see this get through 25 with a vengeance to start feeling better about this. Um, with that said, is there a lot of downside risk? Probably not. Um, I just don't know if we're going to get in this and see this really take off. Uh, we're going to need to see new price volume strength before uh, we can consider this um, as a, a buying opportunity. Only do this for trading opportunities down into support and look to sell in resistance right now. That's how I would do it. Uh, GRFS. So we've come down to, uh, you know, the way we came down and took out this prior low is to me a little troubling because notice, notice this ADX pattern. You see how strong the ADX was on the monthly chart? That just tells me it's going to take some time and we broke this resistance that we're now rallying back to. So until we get back above that level, I don't think I'd want to do anything with this. Um, the shorter term pattern actually looks pretty decent. So if if we can um, maybe form a little bit better action on the weekly chart, maybe pull back like this um, and then get a pull and that causes a pullback back towards the 18 and the 40 day and we get an upturn from there, then you could possibly play this for a trading move up into bigger resistance on the monthly. But it is a trade right now. It's not really something that I would look at longer term. HP, uh, I did get a couple of energy questions. Um, so this has made a pretty good move. So let's just look at this 
and evaluate the monthly because we've made a pretty decent move here, which looks like it has pretty good strength. And we had pretty good green DI, which is pulling back. MACD is trying to get through the zero line, but notice how we reached this 50 level, which had some trouble. Now, this is where the stock has had some trouble in the past. It's trying to get through there, but it wouldn't surprise me if this took a breather or pulled back or paused. Um, so now what we're looking at is a strong ADX condition, a strong MACD condition on the weekly. This pullback could be buyable if the right things happen. You see how we're getting this sideways consolidation and getting the moving averages to come in together on a daily chart. Um, and we have MACD holding the zero line and we have low ADX. So typically my rule is to draw a trend line on price. But since we didn't make a lower low, I kind of have to use a horizontal trend line here. I'd have to see this get through 50 um, in this situation based on the way this is played out to get a trigger off price. Um, that's kind of how I think I would want to handle this right now. Now, if we pull back and we make a minor new low, then you can dull, change the downtrend line to like this, draw it like that, if this goes to a new low, and then use that as a trigger as long as this holds the 18 week. Halliburton um, has already pulled back to the uh, 18 week, good momentum condition in place. Now, um, Let's just discuss this for a second because you see how this pull, first pullback and then it tried to rally and then it came back to here and it, MACD was crossing over before we turned up on this last bar. So when I see that, I'm inclined to believe that the midpoint acts as resistance the first time. And it's exactly what happened. This rallied up. So here's the decline. And then we rallied up to the midpoint, basically this prior high, and we're coming back down. It doesn't mean we're rolling over. But it, it, a lot of times it's telling me that we consolidate a little bit. When we have good ADX, we're can still thinking that there's more upside. But when the MACD does this, I'm inclined to believe we do some kind of a W pattern rather than just go straight up to new highs. So just keep that in mind. I think that's how we play this. This is playing out. Um, it never triggered on the daily chart because we had overrun on the, you see how the MACD overran the zero line? So we don't take this first move up. We look for a higher bottom and to turn back to the upside. So we'll see if this can survive and turn back to the upside. If it does, then I, I would consider that a buying opportunity. Uh, very, very strong, smaller cap um, energy stock that has made a blowout move to the upside with very strong market uh, momentum conditions. But it is overbought. You see how it's gotten away from the 18 week? So we're, we're looking for this to kind of come back a little bit more. And we want the 18 to come down and touch the 40, maybe even go below the 40 while MACD comes down to the zero line. We don't have much selling strength here. You see how the, the, the red DI... Look at how the red DI is not holding above 25. So there's not much on the sell side at this point. Uh, the one thing I'll tell you is we can't really draw a trend line unless price goes to a new low, maybe comes down to 30. Then we could draw a trend line and look for, you know, a trend line break uh, as a potential trigger. Uh, PRCT, um, pretty nice move coming off this low. You notice how this found support right at the 18 week? Um, the, the ADX is in pretty good shape. Green is above red, uh, pretty good distance between those two lines. Um, but I think what I would look for now is, um, some type of, a, you know, see if this can hold these moving averages and then turn back up through the 40 level. That's probably what I would be looking at just based on everything that I'm seeing here. Now, if I'm playing right now and I'm playing a breakout in a market environment where the S and P is going like this straight down with strong momentum. I'm playing this tight, right? If I want to play this, I'm probably playing with smaller size. I'm using, um, so let's say I buy this breakout and I have a stop here or something like that. If I get what, what I risked, so this is what I'm risking. If I get what I risk, I'm taking some partial profits and then moving my stop to a break even on the balance. Okay, don't mess around in this market environment. As long as the market is fiercely going down, um, we, uh, we got to be a little bit more nimble about our trading opportunities uh, because we're trying to avoid losing right now. Preservation of capital, I think, is key uh, until we see a real climax low uh, take place. And then I think you could be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, another energy stock. So, um, you know, very powerful breakout. Look at this monthly chart. Look at how we've taken out all this big area up here. But we're, we're due for a pullback. 
um, we've gotten stretched away, right? This time frame is positive now. Look at how the 18 and the 40 are up and prices above them and both are rising. We have confirmation of an uptrend. Obviously, we broke out of this big base, but we're stretched away from the moving average. We ought to look for some kind of a pullback. The positive is on a monthly chart, the trend is fairly early. I mean, we'd be looking to buy the first pullback in this as long as we get a setup on the weekly chart. Um, now, it might not want to pull back right now. I mean, if you look at the momentum on the weekly, um, we had a pretty strong breakout and a minor little pullback. And this is sort of the second pullback in the trend. So um, this is more of a sideways consolidation, but we could break out through 175 and go for another target. Um, again, play it a little bit more nimble at this point. Um, you got to be, I, I think you have to be thinking in terms of um, avoiding making bad trades right now rather than missing out on really good trades. And I think if you have that approach, you're going to be better off. Now, we're going to hit some kind of a climax in the market, I would think, at some point. And at that point, I think you can take advantage of and be more aggressive. Thanks for watching the show. If you have an interest in having one of your stocks analyzed on the show, go ahead and send the symbol to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.